Generation upon generation have expressed their desire to return to Eretz Israel. And after the miracle of the Six Day War, a group of idealistic people led by Rabbi Moshe and Miriam Levinger, with great determination and faith, returned to settle the land and to raise their families in Hebron, Ir Havot, beside the Maratha Machpelah. With each succeeding generation, the children and grandchildren continue the struggle against all odds to settle and rebuild the Jewish community of Hebron. They have made it clear. We, the children of the pioneering settlers today, stand in the footsteps of our pioneering parents, as well as our ancient forefathers, and are here to stay. You know, we have a real problem here at the Marat HaMachpelah. Despite the fact that Avram Avinu purchased the place a few thousand years ago for a few hundred shekels, the first historic purchase by the Jewish people, nevertheless, today, thousands of years later, there are those who still deny our claim to this place and our right to live here alongside the tomb of our forefathers in Hebron. They threaten our very existence here. Our mission is to persevere in our hold on the city of the patriarchs. We know what happened in other places like Shechem, where there are no Jews, there is no access. Where there is no community, there are no prayers. Once or twice a year, the army lets us in under a heavy guarded convoy. But that's not the case here in Hebron. In Hebron, thank God, our access to the Marat HaMachpelah is ensured, all due to the efforts of the holy Jews who make every sacrifice to live here despite the difficulties just to keep guard of our nation's heritage and our forefathers' hallowed burial sites. This is residential Beit HaShalom. Yeah. This is my daughter, Adaret, and she and her husband live here. Ma'ase Avot, Siman Lebanon. We hold on to Hebron, not only by raising families and settling buildings, but also by settling in the hearts of our younger generation. This place is of extremely great consequence to each and every one of us. It unites us all and binds us to the land, to Eretz Yisrael. Many of the soldiers, many of them, after the two, they come to me and say, you know, you changed my life. And they went, well, they didn't really know who they are, what connects them to this land, what history they have here. They hear what the Arabs say, they hear what the media says, that uh, the Israelis are uh, occupiers on this land. They are very confused. Now, when they come here, they see the real history of the nation of Israel. They see their history as Jews. They begin to understand. Ah, this is me. I'm here. And these are my fathers and mothers. And this is my history. They begin to understand who they are. This is why they come and say, you changed my life. Soldiers who come to Hebron are willing to learn from us because they know we care about them as people, no matter where they are from. Yoni Bleichbard, Hebron's security officer, came from Ranana to study in Yeshivat Shavei Hebron and ended up staying to live in Hebron after he married the Rosh Yeshiva's daughter. Like the rest of the community, Yoni's devotion to the soldiers in the area knows no bounds. In November 2002, when terrorists viciously attacked a group of soldiers at Worshipper Lane in an attempt to carry out a terrible terrorist attack, Yoni leaped into action, fighting the terrorists as he stood shoulder to shoulder with Hebron commander Colonel Dror Weinberg and Kiryat Arba security chief Yitzhak Bonish, who fell alongside him in the battle which took another 10 lives. Two years later, we had a son and named him Dror Amichai after Colonel Weinberg, a name which means freedom my nation shall live, a name filled with great heroism deep faith, and setting an example in the hope that this name will lead our son to grow up and fulfill the great vision of the Jewish community of Hebron. 
Israel's security and unity is the message of Hebron. Yoni makes sure to deliver Hebron home-baked goodies and a Devar Torah to every single soldier in the area. Many of them have never heard or seen a Devar Torah before in their lives. Hebron's devotion to our soldiers is tested again and again. Ayal Noket, Hebron's first response paramedic, charges in to help soldiers injured in a terror attack. The terrorist is hiding out, and as soon as Ayal arrives, the terrorist opens fire, and Ayal is injured. After having won out a bout with cancer and surviving two serious terror attacks, Ayal is still the happiest person around. Besides being on call 24-7 as Hebron's frontline paramedic, his day job as Hebron's engineering and maintenance director keeps him busy making sure everything is in running order and projects get finished. After being honored at our 2007 dinner, Ruth Simon committed to a large project for the children of Hebron. Ayal oversees the all-Jewish team of workers, making sure that everything is done properly. Ayal's special mission is the greening of Hebron. Our purpose in this area is to turn it completely green into a blooming garden to remove this dead soil and replace it with fertile topsoil. Plant grass here and put a playground here. Danielle Rothman is a brand new Ola and Hebron resident. Straight from Seattle, Washington, she came right off her Nefesh Benefesh flight and went to do her Sherut Lumi national service in Hebron. There are 29 kids here in the Gan. I already love all of them. They all have the tremendous route to grow up here where the Ma'ara is there, is right next door. They're used to davening in it every day. They're, some of their parents and grandparents live here and they live an everyday life that they don't realize is so unique and so special because God keeps this place going and God knows that we have to be here and protects us here. Danielle isn't the only young woman to make her mark here in Hebron. Like every Jewish community in the world, Hebron too has a Chabad house run by Danny and Batsheva Cohen. Someone offered us to come and live in Hebron and luckily we get a place in uh, two months. Usually it takes you about four years to get a place in Hebron. We uh, have the merit of being the Chabad uh, Shokan here in Hebron. And we work with the soldiers around the area. We host them over uh, Friday night meals. We uh, do parties for them. One shops in Hebron I think changes your perspective right away. You see that it's a holy place and there's something magnetic in heaven. The children continue in their parents' footsteps because the secret of succeeding as a parent is being a true role model. This is a deeper meaning of Zechut Avot. This is the secret of the Jewish family founded in Hebron. The parents don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk. A lot of times parents have to give long speeches to their children and a lot of musar. But yet here in Hebron I feel the message is being transmitted from parents to children by just the children seeing the Sirit Nefesh. When the children see their parents committed to high ideals, to always putting Am Yisrael before themselves, and the ideals of Eretz Yisrael and Tarat Yisrael, and what's good for the Jewish people, it Baruch Hashem is carrying down to the next generation. Thank God our children in Hebron have been continuing the dream, fighting for Eretz Yisrael, living in Eretz Yisrael, many continuing here in Hebron, and others continuing on the new hilltops and the Gvaot. Baruch Hashem, the man Yitzav et Banav et Bnei Beto Achrav, following the footsteps of Avraham Avinu and giving it over to the next generation. These kids do not leave things for their parents to do. They pick up and strive on where their parents left off. Isn't it time you joined them? Imagine the satisfaction our Avot and Imahot take from these little kids. We talk about Zechut Avot, the merits of our fathers, but where else can you help children hold on tight to the most basic values of our heritage? Only here, back where it all began, in Hebron.
Lona Zoo.